Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and iOS 18 is expected to be one of the biggest updates in Apple's iPhone OS and iOS history. Now I know you're going to say we've heard this before and you're right, but not from the people who usually get it right. Previous years, there were new leakers, leakers we hadn't heard of, or that had maybe sort of guessed in the past and sometimes gotten lucky. This time around, Mark Gurman is actually saying it along with others such as Mac rumors and more that actually have a much better track record. So this this time around, I thought we would visit what features are expected so far and then look back in maybe a few months after iOS 18 beta 1 is released to see what was actually accurate. Now we'll talk about when to expect iOS 18 beta 1 in the public release later in this video, but first let's talk about the supported devices. I've covered them in a separate video, so we'll go over this quickly, but basically everything iOS 17 supports should be supported in iOS 18 according to a couple different very reliable leakers. So that means the iPhone XR, the iPhone XS, XS Max, all the way up to the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, and of course future iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max devices. So so if you have an iPhone SE second gen, third gen, all of those in theory should be supported. It's not the case with all iPads, but most of them should get support. Now, as far as new features, well, this should be the biggest update ever, according to many different internal sources, apparently. To most, this means some sort of redesign, at least with something here. So whether or not that's specific apps, different icons, everything overall, going from iOS 6 to iOS 7 was a pretty big leap as far as design. We went from a skeuomorphic design to a flat design, which I've never really cared for. I would love to see maybe neomorphic or maybe just more depth brought to the apps in general. So maybe what we've got with Mac OS, just bring some more depth into the icons, some more life, I think. Other than that, of course, we could get redesigns with apps themselves. And of course, I would love to see a big change with the control center. I've talked about this in the past where I've just never been a big fan of the current control center. So seeing them change that would be great, but none of that information really has been confirmed as far as the overall look. Some have said that it might look like Vision OS and we don't really know. However, the few things that we are hearing as far as design goes, is the home screen. The home screen is going to be one of the biggest visual changes in iOS 18, where it's said to be more customizable and finally allow you to arrange your icons how you please, but still in some sort of organized fashion, meaning probably locked to some sort of grid. Maybe you could have a line here, skip a line, have one here, have them on the side, but instead of just being scattered throughout, maybe some sort of organization or groups. We don't know that 100%, but in general, I think this needs a full rewrite so we can place them wherever we want. I know you can do that on Android, but I think Apple would do it more sort of in a lined fashion or some sort of organized fashion. Also, we're hearing that there could be more customization with the home screen, similar to what we have with the lock screen, where we can actually go in, customize it, change the home screen, change different widgets, things like that. So hopefully it's not as many steps as this process is, as I think it's a little bit convoluted as far as the process of changing the lock screen wallpaper, but hopefully we'll get some major changes there. Of course, the design of the icons could change, more depth, like I said, and the thing we do know 100% that's coming is RCS messaging. That's coming later this year, and we know this as Apple has said it publicly in a statement to 9to5Mac. However, they never said specifically when it would release. However, a recent post by Google, which was later removed, said it would be coming in the fall, which would line up with what we would expect for iOS 18's launch. RCS with messages will allow for a better standard where we could have encryption. Whether or not Apple chooses to use that though, we don't know. It allows for reactions, different things that basically we're used to in iMessage, but would be across to Android devices too, or just someone using text messages in general. It would allow for better interactions, better messages, better group messaging, and much, much more. So I can't wait for them to roll this out. Now, AI is the big word this year for iOS 18. I'm wondering how many times Apple will say it at WWDC when they introduce iOS 18, but Apple's been working on AI for years to implement it differently than maybe some others have with generative AI models into its software. We know this in a few different ways that Apple's working on this, but Apple themselves have actually been busy publishing papers on different models they've used, things they can do, such as understanding the apps and the layout of what you're using. Apple's also been hard at work making sure the AI features actually run on the device and don't need cloud servers according to the latest leaks and rumors, meaning that it doesn't need to use the internet to communicate with iCloud or 
similar to what Google does with Gemini or maybe open AI, it can do that on device for certain processes. So that's something it looks like would be really great. As far as privacy, everything would be private on device only. And maybe there'll be some features in the future that allow it to communicate with iCloud, but you would have to allow permission. We don't know the additional details with that though. Now the idea of AI in general is nice in theory, but it wouldn't mean much if you had no way of interacting or using it. Siri is expected to get an overhaul to become much more useful in iOS 18. This would make sense if AI is going to be a feature and the most recent leaks suggest Siri would be more of a natural speaker in conversations. And Mark Gurman has also suggested that Siri will work on things with iMessage to maybe help answer questions or just autocomplete sentences with maybe better than it currently does. So you have that with business options. Maybe it would help with that. And also we're expecting AI to assist with Apple music where it would benefit from generative playlists. Maybe we go into a library here and we want a playlist and my new playlist would be similar to what we have with replay 2022, but maybe just be a little bit more accurate using AI to give us that sort of better experience. We're hearing this from Spotify as well. Also, iWork apps such as Pages, Numbers, and Keynotes are expected to get generative AI updates as well. And from other similar apps such as summarizing things, maybe such as writing what you have, and then it puts it in an outline for you and can just save you a lot of time in general. Now, iOS 18 is expected to bring some new features to AirPods as well, specifically maybe a hearing aid mode, according to Mark Gurman, and it would allow you to use your current or future AirPods to work as hearing aids with updated features compared to what we have now. We have some features that are similar to that, but not exactly sort of hearing aids. And I'm not sure that Apple will be allowed to call them hearing aids, but they could have features similar to that. So we do have hearing aid options, hearing devices in accessibility with iOS 17, but to be able to use these would provide maybe a much cheaper alternative for hearing aids, maybe while they're waiting for some new hearing aids, or maybe something else entirely that we're not foreseeing. So we'll have to wait and see what they do with that. And this year will be no different than previous years where they put a lot of effort into accessibility. The latest rumors suggest there'll be new live speech options where you could create your own custom phrases to use with categories you create. So we have spoken content. We had the ability last year to actually add our voice. So if we want it to sound like us, we could do that. And also, to go along with that, you could create your own adaptive voice shortcut to activate a feature based on a phrase you set. So you could set it maybe to say magnifier and it would open the magnifier or any other feature you need, such as zoom, maybe display in text size or anything throughout, sort of like a shortcut, but with your voice. So not just what we have now, but additional features on top of that with live speech and much, much more. Of course, we expect apps to get an update as well. And a new leak from Apple Insider has said that notes is expected to have a voice memo option built in that would allow you to embed them directly in a note without copying them from the voice memo app itself. So you could go into notes, maybe start a new note, and then maybe have a voice memo option at the bottom where you could record what you want and have it in here, or maybe even transcribed. Also notes is rumored to include mathematical notation where it would allow you to put in equations in the notes and maybe work directly with a calculator. So maybe you're taking notes for school. You need to interact with that, add an equation you're trying to solve for a math problem, and you'd be able to do all of that directly in notes. Also Freeform is expected to get some updates. Now that's an app that I haven't really touched since the actual launch of it, but some people use it for maybe sketching ideas out, collaborating, and now it's expected to get a new scenes option that would help you assist in navigating to specific areas. That's one of the challenges is you kind of can do whatever you want and put things anywhere, but when you're trying to find those things, it's tough to locate them. So if we were way over here and we wanna find where maybe I've drawn something else, you have to sort of guess to get to that point. With scenes, you wouldn't have to do this. You could have a scene that says maybe Zolotech. You could be working with someone else. They want to see what I've put. They could go directly to that. So that's something we're expecting there. Now, of course, we know there'll be much more than that, but we don't know how much of a visual change iOS 18 will bring, but we can expect at least one new wallpaper, of course, and many updates throughout probably some new widgets. Hopefully iPad OS will get a big change as well. That really could use some sort of overhaul. And I know we're waiting for new iPads very soon, but one thing I would love to see with the iPad is an option to maybe switch to a Mac style mode where we can manage things a little bit better. 
I actually would love to use an iPad as a Mac in general, where it would sort of have a mode switch when you connect it to a keyboard or a display. I don't think they'll ever do that, but I would love to see something that's a little bit different than we've had for a long time, other than basically a larger iPhone with additional functionality. Now the release date of iOS 18, we know for sure typically with the first beta is right after the WWDC keynote. That's set to take place on June 10th, and on June 10th, usually around 1 p.m. Eastern time, we'll have the keynote that lasts a couple hours. After that keynote, usually within an hour or so, we'll get the first beta. That would mean around 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern time, we'll get iOS 18 beta 1. Then we'll have regular betas from June all the way until September. And then typically we'll have a launch of iOS 17 or 18 or whatever the next versions are before the iPhone 16 launch which means probably the week of the 9th or the 16th, we would have the launch of iOS 18 to the public. So that's typically what we can expect as far as the release date and all of the features we know so far. I would expect even more leaks and rumors to come out before the first launch, but we're only a couple months away or not even that at this point. Let me know what you would like to see in iOS 18 the most, split view, something else. I know a lot of people would love to see split view right in iOS 18, or maybe just a few other features. I'd love to hear what you want most in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.